Hello everybody, this is Michael from the Board Games Chronicle. Today I have another fantastic game from David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin. Today I have for you General Orders World War II. I've already played this game a couple of times and really had a lot of fun with this. I can't simply imagine the, the, the breadth and depth of David and Trevor designs. They create such a wide variety of interesting games. And today we will be talking in this teach and play material about, I would say, even two games in one box. First of all, this is a very small box. You can see my hand, so it's really, really small. And what you are getting here is a very strategic view on a war game. One war game will be in the... Uh, Alpine regions of the North Italy, the other in the Pacific. It will be combination of the war game and the worker placement, and a very replayable, intriguing, and yeah, exciting type of uh, design. What I will do today, I will show you components. I will show, uh, tell you about the game rules, and we'll try to play a bit yeah, uh, uh, this, this this game to hand it. Uh, it doesn't have a solo mode, and I would say. Probably this is not the most suitable for solitary play of the, uh, of, the, of the games, mainly because of some hidden information, cards, which can alter the actions. But I think we should be able to show you the game and the play and I had doing this to hand. So what do we have inside? I put all the components into the cube for me, small trays. It really helps us to sort all of them. So these are the armies and generals. Here we will have airplanes. Here we have dice and some randomizers regarding the usage of some fields. Here we will have cards. And here we'll have a map. Everything fits nicely inside the box. So maybe let me start with showing you the map. A very small map, a tiny map, I would say. And one is for Pacific game. We will look at this later on. And the other is for the Alpine part. So let me do it that way. Let's talk today and, 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 and uh, yeah, in this video about the Alpine map and Alpine rules. So we will set aside the planes. They will not be used. And what we will also set aside, let me put it that way. Maybe like this. That means that we will also not use some of the cards which are marked with a palm. So let me just show it to you. We will not use. Okay. Okay, these are the player eights. Let me just remove. You see a lot of, of those cars. Mm -hmm. Wingman, so this is the Pacific. Intercept is also Pacific, and Airstrike is also Pacific. So we remove the Pacific part and let's do the teach and play on the Alpine map. So we have a very nice tiny rule book with all the needed information. What I like is also that in colors you have marked what is for the Alpine and what is for the island game. So even the setup, uh, things like special uh, setup part or rules, all of this is nicely put here. You see, the game is small, but it, the game is pretty, pretty deep and gives a lot of fun and, and, and a lot of joy. At least I, I had a lot of fun. So what do we have? We have a game board. Uh, we have a support board. Then we have commanders and armies. Let me put them here and here. Okay. Then uh, we have the troops. These are the troops. These are the commanders. Okay. Then we have, of course, die. Dice. So we will be rolling a bit in this game. Uh, then we have some 
Mm. How do they call them? Area bonus tokens. Okay, area bonus tokens. We'll talk about them too. And there will be also the card deck, the cards which we will be getting to enhance some of our actions. And there is also the initiative mark. So this is how all the components look like. I believe you, would, you should have a nice look at this in the camera. So now let's go one step lower. Let's talk about the details of the, of the game. Uh, we will do some discussion about the map. So here you can see the land areas. This is the land area. Those two hexes. This is land area. This is land area. And we'll be playing using those land areas and moving from one to, to, to another. We'll have some starting troops. And the starting troops are nicely presented on the map with those dots. You can see the um, uh, blue dots and the yellow. So let me put them here. There are like three armies here. And there are three armies here. Mm -hmm. There are three here. This map, uh, the Alpine map, is kind of an introductory one, I would say. It's pretty symmetric. Not fully. You will see in a moment. Not fully. But it is pretty symmetric and it teaches you how to play generals, general orders. While the Pacific map would be really much more, much more complicated. Okay, so this is the initial setup of the forces. The next uh, thing I would like to talk about is HQ. You can see this is HQ. So it is placed here on this field and HQ of a yellow player is, is here. Uh, those um, stars, pink stars, shows um, uh, what is the value in victory points at the end of the game of particular areas. Uh, three for the center, two for those two, and one here. If there is no an automatic victory at the end of the game, the uh, side which uh, controls more points at the end of the fourth turn simply wins, wins the game. Uh, the other way to win the game is to control the uh, HQ or terrain with the HQ of the opponent. Much lesser uh, happening here than, than uh, in the, in the than victory by, by points, I would say. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, linked action spaces. So this is important. And as you can see, there are some dark spaces here and what they mean they mean some actions this would be advanced actions will be uh, artillery strike action this will be para drop action and there will be also some 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 other actions which can be can be done uh, here we have area bonuses the one which is here it's permanent it simply says that uh, whoever defends here will have plus one um and, and die to roll now let me shuffle them and let me choose a couple of others. You see, this is a game repli uh, replayability because you are getting each time something different. By the way, look at the color. This is only for the Alpine map. So we rolled, we just took four. Two will not be playing in this particular presentation. Okay, uh, what else we need to do with a setup? We have a game board, we have support board, and we have commander tokens here. Everybody has five commanders, you can say five workers. And there are four in the standby area. Okay, guys, I believe this would be with, should be with this. So in order to be able to present this better to you, let's flip it. Let's put it here. Let's change both colors. And we should be fine. So here we have the standby area. We have four additional potential generals. You might probably already think, okay, if I have more generals, more actions, I will have some advantage. Yep. 
you think where you think in the right direction definitely okay so what else about the setup we already put the troops so we don't have airplanes here uh, we have uh, operation count let me shuffle them we already prepared the decks for the alpine part we took out the cards with those palm yeah, designators and now we have a die uh, but we don't have my favorite die from there. let me take it okay that's it and now uh, let us check who will be first we just flip the um, initiative icon in the first round the blue will be first and then it will be changing now we did the setup uh, what we should understand in this game what we'll be doing we'll be deploying commanders one at a time so first the blue then the yellow then the blue then the yellow then we will recall the commanders and then we will advance the turn marker uh, as i said the game ends either after four rounds uh, and at the end we tally the points or when one player loses control over hq land area okay uh, how to control the area in order to control area you need to have troops in it so yeah like in this case we have a troops in the, here there's a very let's say um simple uh, also um, a rule regarding the supply in order uh, to for the land area to be in supply you have to control the area yeah of course it seems straightforward but also the area is connected to your hq land area through an unbroken line of areas you control so in this case here's the hq and each and every area is of course in supply but if we would not have those um, forces this area would be out of supply and supply uh impacts whether we can do the uh, we can do the move or we can do the action what actions do we have uh, uh, there are a couple of them uh, on the map and there's a couple of them in the support action spaces let's talk about the first and most important this is advanced important uh, the blue will be starting you put the marker on the area where you would like to go and in order to be able to play this you need to have forces in adjacent uh, land areas and you need to have at least two forces there because if you would have a situation like this you cannot move it here because you can you have always to leave at least one unit behind in this case we can move both of them here if there are any troops of the opponent let's assume something like this then we will have a battle uh, battle is uh, resolved pretty quickly the defender rolls one die on this die we have one blank one two hits and four one hits that many hits are being inflicted zero on the attacker and then there is attrition on both sides one to one in this case both of those would go out and only one uh, blue will stay this is a worker replacement guys so if you have a worker here you cannot put another worker here unless some special cards allows you to do this so so that way uh, that way really uh, when you do move in some area you block your opponent so this is advanced there will be paradrop paradrop is here for the blue and here for the yellow you put your general here you take two of your forces and you can put them wherever you would like on the map with two exceptions it cannot be on this uh, water area and it cannot be here in the hq it assumes there's a very good anti-air uh, defense here and it's also to prevent some crazy ways to take over the, the, the hq the cards will allow you to put more paratroopers the cards will allow you also to uh, uh, fire with the anti-air uh, defenses against those paratroopers 
So advance and para drop, then we have barrage. Barrage can be done only by artillery, one is here and the other is here. Uh, we choose a target which is maximum three hexes away, so one, two, three from walls or from walls, one, two, three, for example. And we roll two dice and total the value of, of hits, for example, if we fire from here to here, we would inflict three hits and kill everybody there. Okay, I'm just looking into the into the rule book. Yep, yeah, we have a couple of important uh, actions also here. We have reinforce. It allows you to put six units on the map, of course, in various uh, which are in supply, and you never can uh, have more than five units in one area. Plan is very interesting because you take two cards here, you take one card here, and get the initiative. So, for example, flip like this. As you can see, this reinforce is weaker than that one. And the important rule is that you can only have one reinforce and only one plan in your uh, round. Checking whether some additional stuff I should discuss. Yes, we should probably tell a bit about the cards. So uh, there are two types of cards. The ones you play in your turn, these are the black ones, and the ones you play during the opponent turn, these are the red ones. Here uh, it tells you what to do and when to do, when taking the barrage during the defense step of a land conflict. Or alternatively, you can play each and every card to reroll one die. Sometimes very important and valuable to do it. Cards are really game changers in some of the attacks, and what I learned is that while initial gains can be really, really nice, uh, long term, long term, it really adds a lot. Last thing which we should discuss are the area bonuses. So you know that here you roll with one additional die in, in defense. Here, very cool stuff because uh, this is uh, allows you to take a commander from your standby area and place into your reserve. So you have one more action, and one more action, five, uh, six in the, uh, instead of five, is really good. That one, uh, this is forward basis. Immediately after you have performed an advance action, but before resolving the attack. Uh, we, you add one troop from your reserve. So if you do the advance here, you immediately would add one more unit here. Um, of course, you need to control this area to be able to, to, to use it. This is, of course, sorry, connected to the planning action. So uh, allows you draw, to draw one additional card, and this is for the para drop. This allows you um, to, to add one additional troop from your reserve to the target area. And of course, this is not one time or one round. You can use it as many times as you want. Uh, uh, so, for example, with every advance, in every defense, with every plan, with every parachute. And of course, you, you, you are just adding general here, so, so you will have it permanently on your side. You see? A small game, but there are some rules, some important rules, which you need to take care about and, and understand in order to play it uh, yeah, properly. So guys, I believe the best way to, to teach some ga such games and to learn them is to play them. And I believe we'll do it now, which should also show you the gameplay. Okay, so let's start. The blue is first, it has initiative. Uh, it would like to take already some of the bonuses which we see here. So let's say that we want to go for this bonus, for the para drops. They will move two units here. Seeing this, the yellow thing, okay, they will be attacking us. Let's do some reinforcement. Let's reinforce our artillery. Let's reinforce our forward uh, yeah, area. So one, two, three, we have three more. I believe with three more, we can have uh, advanced, advanced groups here. 
and maybe protect the headquarters. Now, what can uh, the blue do? Uh, they will again uh, move forward. This time they would like to get one more general. One, two, go here. And that's all. Now, this is disturbing for the yellow ones. They cannot get here because there's already a, a general here. They cannot get here, but what they can do, they can do the bombard and they will do it. They will fire from here to here. Uh, by the way, of course, the blue ones got additional general here. So two die and they inflicted one hit. If they would kill everybody here, uh, the blue would lose this general because they would not be controlling this anymore. Okay, so the blue has pretty nice options now. I believe what he would like to do is to consolidate a bit his gains. So he will go for the five reinforcements. Three, four, five. Here is a weak area. Here are also weak areas, which can be cut with artillery. And now I believe one more at the front and one more at the front here. The yellows think, okay, we also want some cool stuff. Let's go here. We'll be getting more um, um, reinforcements with every advance. We move three here. Now the blue mm, could potentially do the paradrop. They have some idea where to do it. We mark it here. We take three, not two, three paratroopers and we will throw them here. That will mean our first fight. There are no cards yet for any of the sides. So simply we roll for the defense with one die. They killed two. Ah, too many. Because now the attrition removes one one, and as you can see, uh, that uh, that 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 didn't cut the, the supply. Okay, uh, the blue would like to start using this cool um, bonus. They will go here. They will take three units with them, but they are getting one additional. Thanks to this area bonus. We have four of them. Okay, and the blue still have the artillery. They have the reach of, they have reach here, so they will fire here to cut the supply. Yes, they managed to do it. And now, look what yellow can do. They need to restore the supply. And they will move here. Unfortunately, they cannot use this bonus because there is no supply to this bonus. So they simply move two units here. And that's all. Blue has still some option. And I believe he would like to take some cards. Let's see what. Normally, of course, only the blue would know what cards they have. Yellow would not know, but let's see. So we have artillery strike. Roll two additional dice, cool, very powerful. And we have ground assault, add up to two troops from your reserve to the uh, linked area. Nice. Okay, so both things will be helping in our attacks, which is good because if we would have some ambush, probably we would need to think twice about uh, what we need to do. As you see, guys, we just finished the turn. Uh, we need to do the cleanup. Those goes here. Okay. One additional general is a huge advantage. As you can see. And we move to turn two. It's still the mm, initiative on the side of the blue. They have to think uh, what to do, what would be the best way to progress. Probably they would like to take um, some cool stuff. I believe cutting this space is of the utmost importance 
because that allows to break the supply to those two areas and they will do it with this card so let's put it in this card we'll roll four die and we hope for at least two hits four even better now <clears throat> this is a problematic situation for the yellow uh, the problematic in that case that uh, they don't have the supply here so what they will do they will gather the reinforcements they have need them only in various in supply so what we'll do we'll put the fifth here we'll put three here for the expedition force you see there's five and we'll put two here now uh no 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 the blue the blue will push further the blue will do the paradrop and they will do a paradrop here they will put normally two units plus one because of this three units okay guys that's getting dangerous because as you can see they have a supply path uh, to uh, to the HQ. Of course, there are like five units in HQ, so that's still a lot. But movement here cuts those two areas from the supply. So we need to restore the supply somehow. And in order to do it, the yellows will move here. They will move like two units here. Should be enough. And now they have supply in this area. Okay. The blue ones can do now the reinforcements. And they will, of course, reinforce here. And they will reinforce here. It's getting very dangerous. To here, to here. And one more, let's say, over. Here. Why it's getting dangerous? Because now uh, this is not known by the yellow player. If they push with those five here, adding two, seven, they can wipe out most of this. Uh, I believe it's time for the yellow to play strategically and they will draw three cards because they have one additional and maybe they will have some nice ambush. Let's see. Oh my goodness, they have some cool stuff. They have ambush during the defense step of a land conflict, roll two additional die. And they have to anti our roll two additional dice during the def air defense defense step of a land conflict. Your opponent initiated by taking a power drop action. Okay, now they feel much better. Uh, still, the blue ones would like to risk. And they will risk the advance here. They will play that one, that card. So they will move one, two, three, four, five, six units there. They hope there will be only one die on the defender side, but no, they have ambush. So the ground assault with six and the ambush, which gives three die. Let's see. Okay, two are dead, but you see, four are left, so this is a huge, huge carnage. Without, I believe that without those, um, without this ambush card, the game would be over now. It's pretty close to over, unfortunately. They are being re-decimated, the yellow ones, but uh, this is not, this is not the end yet okay they would like to start utilizing their cool uh, mm, the cool uh, bonuses and at the same time prevent for example attacks so if they move here they are getting one more of those let me move actually two we want for sure to survive in order to uh, use artillery one die for the nothing so the attrition and voila artillery will be able to hit i believe it's time now for the blue to hit here because only one unit here 
So we move three to this area. The defense roll, which kills one of them. The attrition takes another, but one stays. Okay. Yellow ones. We already had cards, we already have reinforcements, so only things on the map. We can potentially do a very cool stuff. Look at this. They will play a para drop, and this is if you don't have special cards, the only way of putting units into the area where already the general is. So we put two here, the defense roll. Okay. This one is killed, but also those two, which means there is no bonus for the blue one, for that. Uh, what the blue can do? Uh, not too many options, and they are not very compelling. They, they anyhow have the first move next round. I believe they want to go. Where do they want to go? What they want to do, they will go for the card. They will anyhow be first and they draw a card which is mobilized. So take and place up to two additional troops from your reserve in land areas you control supply. So it will be eight and it will be seven. Cool, very nice. Now let's move to the turn three. We do a cleanup. The yellows survived. It was not easy for them to survive, but they managed. The blue will be again first one. I believe what they want to do is to keep pressure on the opponents, but in order to keep pressure, they would need some more forces, so they will go for six, and they will play this card, so it will be in total eight units they would like to place. So, three will go here, two will go here, we have three more, mm, definitely one more here to prevent some crazy attacks, one here, and one here. Now, the yellows, they have a lot of options. Mm, they can draw additional card thanks to this bonus, as and they will do it. They will draw another three. Okay, so let me show them to you. Airborne assault at uh, up to two troops from your reserve to the target area. Counter attack. You may deploy a commander into an ad advanced action space occupied by your opponent. So you can put on the same space as your opponent. The ground assault, you saw it already. It gives you two additional troops to attack. Very good cards. And I will be repeating this. Make sure to invest in them. Now, uh, the blue ones, they would like to do something as long as they can. So what they will do, they will try to do the artillery barrage here. Why here? Again, to cut the connection. They roll to die. So from here, one, two, three. And they managed. And that way also cut the supply from here. Okay, not nice. The yellows, the yellows will take the reinforcements, and I believe we don't have mobilization. No, we don't have. So they will have just five. And they put them again here. And here, and here we have three. You see, one thing which you need to check is how many units you have in those spaces. Maybe, maybe one more here. Prefer like that. Okay, uh, did I put already... Yeah, I put them from the wrong space. I put them from the staging area. Of course, I should take the generals from here. The blue. What can the blue do? Hmm. They will again try this parachuting over here. 
they have three units left. And you see, you cannot use anti-air. You can use anti-air only during the defense step of a land conflict your opponent in initiated by taking a paratroop action. I didn't initiate any attack here. So unfortunately, they cannot do it. But uh, the yellows, yellows, what they can do? Not too many options, guys. Not too many options. Let us advance here to take the possibility of gaining additional troop from 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 there. And the blue ones, the blue ones would like to get some card, and of course they will be first. They are getting mobilized, so more troops. Yellows, yellows are thinking about some attack, but it's not so easy to do an attack. But they can prevent some attacks by simply strengthening the units here. The blue, okay, they already have most of the actions they were interested in. Maybe with. Mm, it's good to also get this one point. So they move here, and now the yellows, you know that the yellows have a, special, a lot of special uh, actions still. Let them do the airborne assault, which gives two additional paratroops. It's also a way of bringing the reinforcements. So they have four, and they would like to probably cut this area. So first of all, one guy of the uh, Defender, one hit, and then attrition to yellow goes down to blue, and those guys, pro troopers, doesn't have the supply. Uh, what the blue can do, they would probably would like to take it back, or maybe play a little more aggressive, move here with three units. Uh, one was from here, so... Three. So, the defender rolls. One, six, that they will kill two. And exactly this is what happened. Then the attrition and the plan did not work. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Let us now play the fourth turn. As you can see, it goes pretty in pretty interesting way. Uh, the, let us do the cleanup. One, two. You know, if the game finishes like this, interestingly, that's the yellows who have more points because we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, and versus two, five. So the blue has to do something, definitely has to do something in, in, in this regard. And they were pretty close to do the damage. Okay. How to start? How to start? Let us start with uh, mobilize. So eight units. But we don't have eight, we have only five. Doesn't make sense. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, it's not so easy. Let's try to parachute here. So we use it here. We put two guys here because we don't have supply to this one. And we roll for defense. Okay, one is dead, but what's important, we cut the supply. And because of this, very will have a problem. All of those units are without supply, so the yellow has to advance, no other option, with, let's say, one unit, just to get the supply back. One unit, because otherwise the hit will be here. Now, let us try to attack here, in this space. We want to get some points of three units versus two or three. I haven't checked. 
two, so they killed each other. Now, the yellows. Yellows now have uh, needed supply, so what we can do, we can attack here, even with three. Defense. Two, wow. Didn't work well. Attrition. Nobody controls this area. The blue. The blue can bring no reinforcements. It makes sense because now with mobilize, they have eight. They definitely put two here. They put where? Where, where, where? They will put one here. So we have five more. They will put one here, one here, one here, and two here. Nice. Yellows. Yellows. Uh, would they need reinforcements? Definitely they would need to protect. And they don't have a mobilize. Uh, so they have five. And those five goes. First of all, two goes here. Two goes here. And one goes here. Interestingly, not too many great options for the blue one. Okay. Uh, and they still have a power drop. Well, let's see what the cards will bring. Airborne Assault and Blitz. Blitz is a cool stuff. Now let us have a look at this. Deploy a commander from your standby area into an unoccupied advanced action space adjacent to the area you just controlled. That will help us to move twice. And this will be really cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. The yellow. What they can do? Not much. Not much. They have counter attack. They have ground assault. I believe ground assault might not be a stupid thing. Well, let's go here. Let's move two of them. Let's use ground assault. So additional two. We roll for a defense. Only one, and they kill each other. So two points less for the blue. Wow, the blue are much more powerful and much more weaker, as you can see. What they can do? They need to try. They need to try this. They put everything here. Now they are afraid. Uh, they need to leave one here. They are very much afraid of uh, potential uh, potential ambush, but there is no ambush. So the defense roll. Sorry, sorry, once again. One is dead. And now three are killed. And. Let me um, let me just check and let me reference the rules regarding the victory because I have a suspicion that the blue just have won because yep it's not opponent taking control of your headquarter but you losing this control. Uh, if your opponent loses control of the HQ land area, you win immediately. So yes, the blue has won. They were very much afraid of some ambush and other crazy stuff here. But yeah, there was not such such one here. Uh, so 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 they managed to prevail. Guys, if we would finish like this on points, it would be a huge advantage. 
on the uh, on the yellow side. Two, two, three, seven to two, seven to two in points. But yeah, they managed to get into the uh, into the uh, HQ. Nice game. Really exciting. I think it plays very quickly and, and is very much replayable. Believe me, Pacific brings even more interesting details, but I would like to do it in a separate video. Uh, that one is uh, long enough already, 45 minutes approximately. I hope uh, you like this. I hope, yeah, it was fun. I'm really appreciating more and more general orders. It's not only kind of a filler. It, you can play these games twice and, and already uh, it, it's much deeper than a regular quick war game. It's not so complicated and, lo and long like you know um, uh, regular uh, big big war game. So perfectly fits in a sweet spot between those two. That's all for today. Stay tuned for the part two, where we will play the Pacific part of the of the game. If you like this video, definitely give thumbs up. If you like to see more content like that, do not hesitate and subscribe. Use the comment section if you saw any errors which I made or maybe you would like to ask about something or comment, feel free to do. Thank you for today and bye.